sister, homework tutor, taxi driver, hospital visitor, grocery shopper, <laughs> team organizer, youth group leader, janitor, Sunday school teacher, music teacher, container organizer, and whatever else was needed. Um, I, there's really no way to give you a good dis job description for being an intern at Restoring Hope Village because it's just about being reliable and dependable and most of all flexible, which were really good uh, lessons for me to learn this year. How to do both of those things, how to be intentional and how to be willing to just drop everything and fill a need and that's, that's what the needs are there right now. <clears throat> lessons learned. <laughs> Ministry is not, um, something the Lord showed me this year is ministry is not this thing you do once a week at church or um, it's not making sure you show up at everything. This year for me sometimes ministry meant teaching a Bible study. Um, sometimes it meant leading a small group, a youth group. Sometimes it was changing diapers. Sometimes it was playing Barbies. Sometimes it was jumping on the trampoline or just being someone who, when every little kid says, watch me, watch this, hey, look at this, you just stand there and watch and give the applause if they want. Um, in every activity I do, I can do that to the glory of God, whatever that looks like, and I need to be sensitive to the Spirit's leading about what to say yes to and what to say no to, and really asking the question, how can I be, how can I be the hands and feet of Jesus to this person right now? Does that mean playing Barbies? Does that mean doing Lois's dishes? Does that mean, you know, chatting with Amber over coffee? What does that look like? And the Lord really just changed my view of what it means to be in ministry this year. 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Another lesson I learned this year is that joy is a choice. <clears throat> there were a lot of times um, where... It didn't feel like there were any reasons to be joyful. Um, conflict and weariness and loneliness. Um, I, I definitely experienced a season in the desert, and I, I often failed at choosing to have joy in, in certain situations, but God is so faithful, and His mercies are new every morning. And, um, He was so good to remind me that Jesus is enough, that he is my reason for joy, not, not my circumstances, <clears throat> not, not people, not relationships, um, but, but Christ alone. In James 1, uh, it says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may perfect, be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. <clears throat> God has given me um, just a really big burden and passion for supporting and encouraging missionaries. Um, and I, I mean more than just financially. Uh, I've realized this year that missionaries are just normal people who happen to live somewhere else. And they have the same needs, uh, spiritually, emotionally, relationally, that you or I do. Um, they're not special. They're not superhuman. <laughs> and they need the same encouragement that, that Lois and, and Amber need the same encouragement that Melissa needs. <laughs> and Louie and Brian need the same encouragement that Joel needs. They're just, uh, they're just normal people. And they're trying to love and serve their communities and share Christ with others and and that's the same thing we do here. Hebrews 10, 23 through 25 says, <clears throat> Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. <clears throat> What's next? <laughs> well, thankfully... He voted that I can go back, sounds great. <laughs> um, as of right now, I have funds to um, return to Restoring Hope for six months. Um, that leaves 
uh, three months worth of salary after coming back so that I have a little bit of time and buffer to figure out what I'm supposed to do after that. Um, the next months at the village just bring continued season of change and transition. Uh, Brian and Lois are currently the only couple serving on the field um, right now at Restoring Hope and they need help. Uh, as I shared, my roommate Lucy is there uh, serving the, the village and she needs friendship and fellowship and encouragement. Louie and Amber O'Toole are now living in Welcome and working with our local church, uh, with our youth group and our um, children's ministries there, and, and they need encouragement too. Um, some other changes that are coming is there is a retired couple from Texas who will be moving to Restoring Hope Village full-time in September, Lord willing. There's also a, a young couple from New Jersey who is on deputation right now raising funds to come also live at Restoring Hope Village full-time. And so there's, there's lots of change coming, God's bringing people, um, but right now they need help and support. And um, at this time, I don't think Restoring Hope Village is where I'm going to be long term. But I'm confident that God wants me to go back and continue to, through the strength of Christ, fill all these crazy roles until things stabilize and get a little more uh, level. <laughs> um, something that's 